Hi there. Welcome to this week's episode of the podcast with me, Russell Davis. I've been thinking about doing this talk for some time. I've been held back. I've been too scared to think what people will judge me for it and not being a professional therapist and a coach. But I want to share one of the biggest aspects of my work that's made the difference in my own personal life as well as the life of my clients. So let's unpack what I think is behind life, an energy of life that's got our back, and what if that's true for you. Well, let's dive in and explore that. I'm not exactly sure where this talk is going to go. But it's something I want to be sharing for some time, but in some way I've been too scared to. I touch on, I guess, the spiritual side of life in my podcasts and my work. And I know my work is underpinned by quite a spiritual psychology. But I guess I like to be grounded in science. <laughs> I was a scientist, mathematician, scientist kind of at school and did engineering at university. And I like facts, figures and, and, and working in the realms of, of reality. And I guess I shy away from super spiritual people in a way that I think they're not grounded or too woo-woo and maybe don't take personal responsibility. There's all sorts of judgments I have around the spiritual aspects of life, but I am spiritual and I work with all sorts of people and I I guess I pace them. I don't want them to think I'm kind of <laughs> shit crazy. And I work with yeah, all sorts of people in different walks of life. And I work in organisations. I do share my psychology with people in teams and organisations. And I think everyone, not everyone, I can't say everyone is no absolute, but I think a lot of people would recognise there's something behind life, beyond us, beyond our comprehension, beyond our human understanding. And I guess my journey to where I am started as a little boy growing up in quite an Anglo-Catholic environment. My my parents went to church. I think they went to church because they thought it would be a good thing for us to do as kids to go to Sunday school. It was a very Anglo-Catholic kind of church. So I grew up in an environment where they talked about a God of unconditional love. All I could see were these things, these rituals and things you had to do, forgiveness and judgments, that didn't kind of square up with unconditional love. And I grew up in an environment at home where my mum was super strict, suffered from anxiety and depression, and she became an alcoholic. And so love there felt quite conditional. I obviously felt, as a little boy, I felt more loved when my mum was happy with me compared to when she was shouting at me. So I had to work hard to work out what the rules are or what I needed to do, who I needed to be, meet her expectations. So she was happy with me. So as a little boy, I felt more loved. So I guess I grew up kind of thinking love was conditional and I became a people pleaser. I didn't think people would like me or love me or respect me for who I am in my sense of being. I had to prove it in some way. Don't get me wrong, I, I love serving, serving people, I think. The world is a better place if we just serve people and think about other people as well as ourselves. And I think our soul is a place of love for ourselves and love for others. But there's a difference between serving and people-pleasing. The people-pleasing is I'm doing it to get something back, a sense of okayness within me, being dependent on helping someone else or them thinking good of me, rather than being rooted in my okayness, my enoughness in who I am. So I struggled in life in many ways. I was suffering anxiety. Um, I was a people-pleaser, warrior 
flatlined through life with low base, more bad emotions, never really had much joy and excitement in life, avoided negative emotions, which meant I avoided conflict, which meant I had, I guess, passive aggression, as my wife would say, when we got married, it's quite an eye opener to me. And then I came across this kind of psychology of my own psycho psychological journey when I had my own kind of emotional crisis when going through infertility. And it was clear that at that point, the likelihood was never going to happen. And I really wondered where happiness has come from. I felt angry about life and God. And I think here's the thing, thinking of this kind of people-pleasing, this conditional love. I felt I'd met my side of the conditions. So I'd met, held up my side of the bargain with God and life. I've been a good man, serving people, helping people in my community, doing all sorts of things, giving lots of money to charity and doing all sorts of things. And here we were, we couldn't even have a baby. And other people I judged that didn't seem to care as much as I did or we did and just seemed to get what they want were in life far more easy than us. So I was angry. The injustice of it, I've done my bit. <clears throat> why can't life and God do it? It's a bit why, why we feel deserted? Why do we feel abandoned? But my spiritual kind of, kind of journey, crisis journey, psychological journey, led me to this psychology that underpins my work and I say it is very spiritual. And it talks about an energy of life that's loving and kind, that's our source of well-being, it's unconditional love. Of course, I got the concept of it. I've been heavily involved with the church all that time and understood and I guess I worshipped a God of unconditional love. But I realised it was a very intellectual experience that I didn't feel I was loved unconditionally. I guess growing up in an environment where you had to work out the rules to make sure you're going to be okay, psychologically, emotionally, I was, there, I was very okay physically, we become self-reliant. I didn't think I could trust my mom in a way, emotionally, it's very unpredictable. So I couldn't trust I was going to be okay whatever happens, I had to make sure I was going to be okay, I had to work out what I needed to do to make sure I was going to be okay emotionally, psychologically. So it becomes quite self-reliant. I became a good thinker. I like to solve problems. I fix things. I work out what I need to do to be okay. And that means I do a lot of thinking. Think ahead. Plan. Couldn't trust. Can't trust life's got my back. Didn't feel like that. Couldn't trust that. So come across this psychology where it talks about God of unconditional love. I wanted that. I sensed it, I could get a sense of it, but I really wanted it, to really feel it. But I was trying too hard to get it, to understand it, to feel it, to taste it, to experience it. I was trying too hard. And I love this, uh, Jack Pransky, in one of his books, used the phrase, thought blocks love. And in fact, it wasn't until I uh, read a book of meditation, I realised how, how much a busy mind I had, how much thought I had in my head, trying too hard. And when I began to quiet in my mind and just be, I was listening to a talk about this psychology, about this energy of love, and I just quieted my mind. I listened as if it was music. I wasn't trying to get it. I was just being in myself and having this talk in the background and I felt something. This talk prompted something within, within me. I heard something and in my heart, not intellectually, I heard something in my heart. I felt full of love. This wave of emotion of love, of compassion for myself. And it's really helped me see how my thinking prevented me from connecting to love, whether it's love from my wife or love of this energy of life. And my busy mind stops me hearing something deeper. This energy of life has got my back. That it guides me, it prompts me, stirs my heart's desires provides insights, clarity, perspective. I don't need to know all the answers that I co-create my life with this energy of life. It prompts me 
Sometimes to come out of my comfort zone to make difficult choices that feel right to my heart and my soul. I don't need to know the answers. I can get quiet and ask the energy of life to show the way. And it's about trusting my instinct, my intuition. My intuition on what I feel I need or want in any given moment. When I have a quiet mind, I feel aligned to the energy of life. Yeah, a lot of the day I don't acknowledge it, recognise it. Like the chair I'm sitting on now. If I think about it, I can feel it. Where I can feel it against my body. How hard or soft it is. But the chair is there, that sensation's there. The whole time I'm sitting on the chair, whether I'm consciously aware of it or not. And so is the energy of life. It's there whether we recognise it or not, feel it or not. But we're only one thought away from being back in connection with it, sensing it, feeling it. Even earlier, I created a big thought storm about some stuff. And my coach just said, hey, have a listen to this. And it was a talk that just guided me back home. Just the words reminded me of the truth of who I am. The energy of life has got my back. The guides us or prompts us. We still take responsibility. It's kind of God within us, if you want to use that word. I don't know what word I'd use. The divine, loving energy of life. Whatever God is for you. It's God within us. Prompts us, guides us. So yeah, my work is underpinned by a spiritual psychology that has really transformed my life. And I see it transforming the lives of my clients. I'm proud of that. Part of me, the scientist in me, wants to play it down. I think people would judge me. I think I'm not a you know, professional or, or serious or a you know, professional coach or therapist. But I am. I am. I believe we're spiritual beings having a physical experience. We're both physical and spiritual. Our soul is formless. And I think a lot of forms of psychology focus on the physical. Goals, actions, do X, Y, and Z. And some forms of psychology focus on the spiritual. We're just energy. We're both. I think we're both. We can't ignore one and focus on the other. We're both. And that's why I love about the psychology that I see and explore and share. So I think it sees how we interfaced the both, how we are. A physical manifestation of the spiritual. Our thoughts create our experience. But there's outside in thinking created on fear and insecurity and egoic thinking we've learnt over the years. But there's inside out thinking, our wisdom, our instinct, the still soft voice within. And that, I think, is God within us, whatever word you want to use the divine, we're being aligned, we're aligned, the divine God, the universe, our hearts, desires and our thoughts all aligned and that's where the magic happens, that's our truth, that's home, that's home. I think in many ways a big aspect of my work is guiding people home, guiding people home and from there they have everything they need, clarity, perspective confidence, resilience, everything they need. So my wish for you is, yeah, you find home. You find home, you can create your life from, from home, from being home. Loving you. <laughs>